uh, I promised to talk about four things. Um, I've talked about three of them. So our last section will be on how much can leaders uh, shape or lead uh, mass opinion? Because this is a real issue. You know, how much are people being manipulated? Um, now we've got social media. Obviously, big topic is sort of the extent to which uh, there's various efforts to manipulate opinion through this. I mean, it's not really new now, social media, but kind of new from the historical perspective of politics. OK. So again, a little like polling, it's important to just remember, you know, it's new, but the idea that leaders are going to try to lead public opinion, not at all new. Um, I sort of wavered between the FDR photo with um, you know, the radio address. There was a nice one of Teddy Roosevelt you know, in a park trying to kind of um, you know, rally from kind of the originator of the bully pulpit on a pulpit. So this is what leaders have done uh, you know, through the ages. Uh, there's Ronald Reagan, right? So we've got kind of the who comes in in the kind of primetime area of primetime TV. Um, and you know, now we've got social media. And the White House is in there uh, because, again, not, maybe not from a normative perspective. It should be. But if we work in politics, like who, the people who are going to win are the people who are going to be using all mechanisms uh, at their, um, that, that are available. And then in addition to president's right, we've got the medias out there. Um, as I'm sure you've seen on TikTok, there are professional groups that are going in and hiring influencers to try to shape um, the opinion of uh, TikTok users, um, even from the age before people can vote to sort of shape their political perceptions um, and in ways that are not always fully transparent. Um, we've got congressional opinion leaders. Um, Right, uh, Tim, there we've got, I'm trying to be bipartisan in my slides, so we've got um, you know, <laughs> Tim Scott and Mitch McConnell, and we've got uh, AOC and Bernie Sanders. We've got interest groups out there. I mean, everybody's that sort of out there trying to shape public opinion, right? Um, the big picture political science is to have sort of everything I've said so far, I actually think most people who work in politics would say like, yes, yes, yes. I wish people understood that. Yes, yes, yes. Now we're going to diverge a bit. <laughs> um, people who work in politics like to think they can shape, that, that this is doable, right? And this is a lot of people's jobs. They're supposed to be out there doing it. You know, our view is it's very hard to do that in part because there is a competition for people's changing people's views. So it makes sense that you want to think you're going to be better than the other side or better than other people at it. But in the end, there's a lot of canceling out. So it's a little like you don't want to sit out your, you know, doing it. So there should, you know, your side needs to be in there too, right? You don't just seat it. But at the end of the day, you want to have a realistic expectation if you're actually in the congressional office or in the president's office of how likely it is that at the end of the day, I mean, in some ways, you're working that hard to maintain opinion on your side. That's harder to do. I, I realize why you want to think, oh, we're going to kind of get a few points here. But what you're probably going to be able to do if you're really, really effective is, in most cases, maintain it and not lose it. Um, but you can think about four different types of views. There's kind of one exception, so there's some kind of, for those who want to go into this business, some kind of positive news. Um, if it's a new issue or one on which voters have very, very little information and you can somehow make it salient or it's already salient, policy views can shift moderately. Not as much as people usually think. And I'm just telling you, every president makes this mistake. Um, they come in because, in some ways, they've won because they were so, you know, they've won the presidency and they've beaten every odd. Nobody thought. I, I remember um, this is a recording I would love to find. I said I thought Obama could win the primary in 2008. People laughed me. I was on NPR. I was basically laughed out of the room in uh, December. And then the same people I was on with who said, it's so obvious it's going to be Hillary. Of course, like th once it was, you know, then they were sort of saying, oh, everybody always knew it was always going to be Obama. So I mean, so someone like Obama comes in, of course, he thinks he can change public opinion. Because I mean, he's like, 
totally, you know, surpassed every expectation. But the evidence is no, you can't do it. Um, uh, you know, um, Clinton didn't do it, Reagan didn't do it. Very uh, popular presidents don't achieve it. They do, they can sometimes shift the salience of issues. And again, if it's a really complex new issue, you can sometimes shift them moderately. On issues where voters' preferences are already fairly set, what political sometimes, uh, scientists sometimes call a doorstep issue that, that you sort of just think about in your doorstep, almost impossible. People know what they think. You know, everybody was surprised at the Kansas referendum result. It's like people know what they think about on the issue of abortion. They've been thinking about it for a very long time. You're not providing any new information on this that they haven't already thought about. And so shifting their views is very unlikely. And that's in both directions, I should note. So it's not shifting them in a liberal direction. It's not shifting them in a conservative direction. Um, but uh, you can change the salience. And presidents like Reagan were excellent at this. He did have, I mean, a lot of charisma. He did have um, the advantage of sort of a media environment that was very um, uh, tight. You know, there were kind of three major networks, right? He wasn't facing what you'd face today. Um, Obama was good at changing the salience of issues. So that's, that's very different than actually changing people's um, policy views. And I would say, you know, I wouldn't say Biden is great at it, but I, you know, he gets in there, he knows he's, he's pushing infrastructure um, and making that a salient issue. So you can, you can when, it, when an issue's in line with public opinion, you can make it more salient, particularly as the president. Um, on complex issues, you sometimes see success. You know, the Truman Doctrine speech is all, often pointed to. Um, George W. Bush in Iraq, you know, before people started developing their views of the war as it emerged in the beginning, he really did lead public opinion on the issue. Um, Trump moves co-partisan opinion on COVID. It's clear he moved, you know, that elite leadership moved the opinion. Um, on the flip side, you can repel public opinion, you know, on those sorts of issues. So Trump seemed to move Democrats' opinion on COVID-19 as well and sort of the policies associated with it. Um, and this is a problem for uh, all presidents because we have these increasingly polarized approval ratings. So the other party has become less willing to sort of shift their views just because a president um, advocated something. Um, and then, you know, what I've already said, that even very, very popular presidents have a lower ability than is commonly assumed. So uh, the, the peak of popularity in recent decades is George H.W. Bush right after the Iraq War. So he goes in there and sort of feels like, yeah, I can push all these domestic policies I've been wanting. No deal. Just, you know, doesn't translate. Um, and Obama and healthcare is another example where there's a, an excellent book uh, by Larry Jacobs and Bob Shapiro, where they go through, some of you may have read it in your classes, um, how the Obama White House thought they could craft public opinion on this issue. And uh, um, actually, no, that's a follow-up article. They write, the book is about uh, Clinton and healthcare and how he thought he could craft it, but been, there's been follow-up work um, um, on Obama. Um, foreign policy is a little more of an effect, and that fits with this theoretical construct I put up. Um, this is an issue on which, um, you know, the interest group environment can be a little um, thinner, depending on the foreign policy issue, and often the issues are very new, like the, you know, kind of Iraq war, um, the second Iraq war when it started. Um, but even here, much lower. You know, Reagan kept trying on the Contras in the 80s, super high popularity. Opinion just stays very unsupportive. It just doesn't move. Um, Biden and the Afghanistan withdrawal, people actually wanted the US out of Afghanistan, but you know, they're gonna form their own opinions about events. They're gonna see things on the news and they're gonna decide what they think of it. Um, so opinion and, uh, you know, less than you'd think. But again, for those of you who go into this business, uh, the, 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 the advice is not don't do anything and let the other side dominate <laughs> no. uh, the airwaves. <laughs> the advice is just be realistic. Don't think, wow, everybody hates this policy. Now that uh, the woman or the 
the man or the, you know, the person I've elected is, um, I've worked all these years for is president, we can just go in and we can definitely shift public opinion. You know, stick to the policies on which you won for, <laughs> the ones on which you, that, that propelled you into office, get those done first. Um, and you know, maybe, maybe opinion will shift for reasons that are on these other ones that aren't very popular for reasons that um, are outside your control. Okay, I wanna leave time for questions, so I'm gonna kinda move through to the summary. So, um, a big picture summary, policy responsiveness is alive and well. So when opinion shifts, it does shift the likelihood that you know, individual congressional members, even presidents, um, state legislators, you know, governors, policy itself moves in the direction that opinion is shifting. It doesn't guarantee it, but it, it, it uh, has a big effect, a noticeable effect. Congruence is not high by design though. There's a status quo bias. And so for people who want a lot of change, this is a real issue. It's, it's there, so I'm not trying to uh, hide that. The quote decline is from this high point in the 1970s, and the levels are actually much closer to those in the 1970s than they are to uh, a large portion of American history. So um, it hasn't been this sort of terrible decline that is often lamented um, about. Um, and the influence of the affluent relative to the middle class um, is not particularly large, and by some measures, completely statistically indistinguishable. So again, that doesn't mean you should say the affluent should never um, have more influence than the middle class, reasonable position, but it's not the case which we often read about that the middle class has no influence. They have influence, and on 90% of the issues, the two are in agreement, and when they disagree, they win about um, an equal percentage of the time. And opinion is not as malleable by elites as commonly assumed. Now that's also because both sides are out there uh, working hard, but it also means that when we hear this, well, you can't even trust what opinion is. You know, It's all just malleable. Um, you should be skeptical. Okay. I don't mean to leave us on too high of a note, you know, because uh, I realized as I was sort of wrapping up the talk that, yeah, that I could sort of seem like everything's great. You know, why are, the, why are people writing these essays that polarization's a problem? I mean, it's so, things are um, going well. But I think there is this temptation when you think some things are going poorly to think everything's going poorly. And so this talk has tried to dispel some of that. Um, trust in government is really low, and that's a huge problem. Um, it's uh, not new to buy, you know, it's been going down over time. It's had some, you know, um, uh, it rises and falls, but it, the, the overall trend, if you forced a regression line, is a, is a kind of steady decline, if you forced a straight line. So that's not good. That's really bad for our polity. Um, you'd think that it means that representation has really dropped. It, as I've tried to say, it doesn't, but that doesn't mean that the trust in government itself isn't a big problem. Um, and um, I, I talked a little about elite polarization. Um, there are other people at Stanford, um, including uh, Shanto Iyengar, one of my colleagues in political science who works on effective polarization, so which is how individuals feel about um, other individuals in the other party. So this isn't sort of elected officials, it's sort of us in this room, right? Um, and that's been going way up. And in fact, uh, I mean, this I, may not come as a surprise to you, but over time, you know, one of Shanto's studies showed that, you know, whereas it used to be that people were really concerned about marrying someone from a different religion, now the big concern is marrying someone from another party, that you just, you know, you couldn't do it. But, you know, someone who's a completely different religion, that's fine, like that's, you know. So um, there's been concern that sort of politics has almost become this emotional religion to, to many people, and that there's not a sort of, um, you know, it's taken on this other, this other life. Um, and that's, that's a problem for our policy more generally. So I don't wanna kind of leave us on too rosy a note, um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the rosy side, if you wanna call it that, is that um, while other things have sort of increased in their, um, um, in terms of uh, kind of what you might call a problematic nature in US politics, representation 
you know, again, a little bit of a decline since the 1970s, but not much, and looks pretty good on a lot of fronts. So that is probably not the area then, even from you know, this perspective, which is how do we increase trust in government? How do we change effective polarization? We want to kind of think about you know, what's changed that might be causing this if it's not really the representation side. <laughs>